Okay, we are on the road again. This is a proper moto camping trip this time. And away we go. Look at these two uh, hooligans. I think they're clothed enough for camera. Start, start over and say all of that again. <laughs> we have achieved our objective, ladies and gentlemen. Feels like the bike is a little bit out of control, like you have flat tires almost. Alright, we are on the road again. This is a proper moto camping trip this time. It's been a minute since I've done this on the on the twin. I'm gonna go out and spend a night out towards uh, the Alsea Falls area somewhere. I have never been, but uh, I'm kind of excited. So I'm gonna meet up with a couple of guys. We're just gonna have a good time. This time we're riding to camp. We're not camping to ride, so be more camp footage than riding footage and it's going to be mostly pavement riding footage i'm probably not going to do a whole lot of that especially not pavement that gets boring right so but it also sounds like we're going to get in some uh, dirt and gravel roads maybe a trail or two uh, when we go up over the top of the mountain to go to uh, the city of lc for beer you know just the important stuff that's what we're doing it's kind of nice to be back in the saddle again last uh in a quarter mile, take the I-205, Oregon 213 South exit toward Oregon City. Interruptions. Thanks, Google lady. It's been a minute since I've uh, actually moto camped. Um, last two times I've been out, it's been uh, in the truck and trailer, actually. Um, and then before that, I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't remember. So, I'm excited. Bonus content for you guys is... Um, it's gonna be cold tonight and we're still not allowed to have campfires so you might be able to see a, a beard sickle in the morning when I freeze to death this morning I was getting doing all my final packing and it was actually ended up being all my initial packing also I waited till the last minute to pack up and man I definitely won't do that again that was stressful just kind of left everything to the last minute this time I had a lot of stuff going on this week actually so just caught up with me but we're all good I'm on the bike and the troubles of the world just slide off like snot. Let's go riding, shall we? Boy, these tires do get noisy. Woo! I don't know about all that. I think Google just screwed me. This sure doesn't look like anywhere I've seen in videos or anywhere that I thought I was going. I'm gonna have to stop and take a look and see what the F's going on. For a bit of context, you may have noticed that I have the Garmin on the dash there. I had been having problems getting the Garmin to accept the coordinates, so that's why I'm using Google on my phone into my headset, which wasn't the best idea, it turns out. I don't know about all that. I think this is a little bagoofy. Bagoofy? What's that word? Bagoofy. That's cool. Google had me going the very wrong way. Thanks, Google lady. When I checked my phone, Ben had sent me coordinates of where they're at because they, they found a better spot at like a campground, I guess, that's super empty that is still open, which means we're going to be able to have a fire tonight. Made it to camp. Here we are. It's actually quite quiet because the campground is not that full. It's mostly empty. Already got camp set up. Look at these two uh, hooligans. I think they're clothed enough for camera. Mushrooms. I got oregano. Right what are you here. making? Pizza sauce? I might. You never know. Dude. Bush pizza. So this this guy Tim he is literally the inspector gadget of camping. He come he comes with everything. I like to eat. Man. <laughs> Tim, put my meat in your mouth. Mm, your meat, I love it in my mouth. 
Road. This is uh, roughing it, and we also we also stay very organized. Yeah. When we're when we're cooking dinner, we, <laughs> we keep the campsite very organized. However big the table is, that's how much we spread out. He's doing Salt Bay, and no one's filming. Good. God damn it! <laughs> you got to do the Emerald Agassi. <laughs> damn. damn, Salt Bay. Camping. <laughs> I guess that's over now. It's dead. Anyway, anyway night's going really well. Um, <laughs> The shenanigans are already happening. Operation Firewood is in effect. There is no camp host, even though they allow you to pay for firewood, such as Ben did for us. There's no camp host here, and there's also no firewood laid out. So he paid for nothing. And in his rage, he broke his camp chair, or his camp table. No, that's not true. He, he just broke his table inadvertently. His table is now much lower to the ground. So, we are foraging for firewood. We're not taking down live stuff. We're taking down stuff that has already fallen or firewood that we find at other campgrounds that was left behind, which we've already been sort of successful. Tim found a round of wood that is nine feet in diameter and about 18 feet long. Carried it back on his shoulder to the campsite. It was quite impressive. I'm going back up towards the shed where the camp host is supposed to be with firewood. But as you can see, barren of firewood or camp host. We may not survive. Sorry, mom. Two more rounds right there. Two more rounds. And I can probably forage some uh, kindling out of here. Wish me luck. Number one rule of uh, bushcraft while you're out foraging for firewood in your uh, Sasquatch jammies is try and find broken limbs. Don't take live stuff, please. That's not nice. And then uh, you bring them back to camp and have somebody else cut them up. But a, a lot of times, particularly this time of year, stuff that stuff that falls or is still kind of leaning is going to be dry. So. This one, this one actually might be a little bit damp, but we'll probably be able to get stuff to burn because I'm also finding some small stuff too. So that's how we roll, right? Wait, yeah, I can go get some more wood. I'm about to. Jeez, freaking kids. At this kids. moment, I'm not. Right. Yeah. Do you want my lighter or? No, no, no. Do you want my okay. lighter? Use the torch. jet boil. Yeah, use the jet boil. Uh, being here is doing everything the hard way. Apparently. I've noticed that. I can't even watch you because I'm going blind every time. Ooh. This, this dude is actually really good at everything. Getting getting a fire started and tending to it. He was even able to do two of them in the rain at the dual sport yeah. summer opener. Awesome. The most important part of any bushcraft everyday carry kit is a Tim. <laughs> Put a little Tim in your pocket. Dance. put some of the Dorito chips on the top of Tim's tent. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I got it on camera. <laughs> ben, what happened to your chair, or your uh, table? It fell down. It's about time to start packing up, but None of us are getting started very quickly. It's as cold as balls this morning. Beautiful area, really, really nice campground. Middle of the week, it's uh, very dead. It was 
It's not empty. There's a fair amount of people in the campground, but it's quiet. Pretty nice. And it's time to go home. But we're going home the, the long scenic way. Make sure we're clear. I don't think we missed anything. Everybody's got everything. We're all strapped down, good to go. I was not minimalist on this trip. I even brought a remote control car. I was camera minimalist, however. No camera on the bike, nothing on the crash bars, just handheld and, and helmet. I brought another camera, so I had plans to film behind the scenes stuff, and I just didn't, so. Yeah, it's all good. It was a good trip. Now we're gonna go find some cool stuff on the way home. Dust, dust already. Get a little bit slidey around these things. Woo wee! Yeah, there we go. That's the stuff. Man, I'm gonna have to open the visor all the way up. Being on gravel on this thing is a uh, a balancing act in between traction and allowing the rear end to slide when you're going around corners just got hit in the forehead by a bug that was comfortable it almost feels like the bike is a little bit out of control like you have flat tires almost I might have to go with a high fender on this thing because these more aggressive tires are really picking up the rocks you can hear them wobbling up through where the the tire goes underneath the the fender I don't want to wipe out my fender and subsequently screw up my front brake line you must have front brakes pavement or off-road i think it's even more important off-road oh yeah i recognize this this is the hull oaks lumber company one of the last steam powered lumber processing places in the country I think but it's also the last in Oregon that can handle the big timber and it's still in operation today pretty cool pretty freaking cool look at all the old old lumber implements and everything that's that's neat even have their their lumber pond there that's why it's full of water and the lumber is just floating there mm. you smell the fresh cut wood and everything it smells great well this road goes right through their property they allow people to use it so if you're coming past this place out by LC um, be respectful and keep the dust down you actually do the speed limit through here I think it's like five miles an hour or something to five or ten just be respectful because they're they're nice enough to allow people to use the road that I think technically they own 